Michael Milding Somali terrorist has been shot dead by police after crashing a car on Melbourne's Cork Street and setting it on fire, before stabbing three men, killing one. The lone wolf attacker was rushed to hospital in a critical condition but later died from his wounds. Officers shot him in the chest after his holding rodeo loaded with gas cylinders hit a pedestrian as it mounted the curb and exploded outside Target near the Swanson Street intersection about 4. 20 p.m. on Friday. Video shot from the scene showed the frenzied attack that carried on for more than a minute, beginning with the attacker charging at two police officers, punching one through a vehicle window and lunging at them with a knife. Victoria Police said they are treating the incident as a terrorist attack, and have identified the man responsible. The 31-year-old and his family were known to counter terror agencies at a state and national level and were believed to have ties with North African extremist groups. His passport was cancelled several years ago after he was noted as one of 300 potential security risks. It was also noted police are unable to get in touch with the man's wife, and believe she is both missing and radicalized. Authorities may be hoping to utilize the state's preventative detention laws for the first time since they came into effect, in which police are legally allowed to detain a suspect for up to seven days should they believe the person poses a threat or security risk, Harold Sun reported. Premier Daniel Andrews said the attack was an evil and terrifying thing that's happened in our state. Our thoughts and prayers are with everybody touched by this, but we will not be defined by this, he said. Victorian Liberal Party leader Matthew Guy said we must eradicate this sort of thing, in a media conference shortly after. Every resource should be going into keeping Victorians safe. The offender chased the officers around a tree as they tried to avoid his blows and convince the man to surrender, and a brave bystander tried to stop the attack by running him down with a shopping trolley. The officers then retreated to the other side of the road as the bearded attacker with a shaved head and dressed in a long brown tunic, pursued them as horrified bystanders called on police to shoot him. The man again attempted to stab and slash at the officers several times before one policeman unsuccessfully tried to taser him. His partner then shot the assailant in the chest thought the knife man clutched his chest and then fell to the ground where he was quickly arrested on the pavement by two plain clothing officers and rushed to hospital under police guard, where he later died on the operating table. The man and his family were known to the Australian secret intelligence organization, the country's domestic spy agency. His possible links to known terror plotters and extremist elements of the North African community in Australia are being investigated. The man moved to Australia from Somalia in the 1990s, Victoria Police Commissioner Graham Ashton said and had a record of minor offenses in relation to cannabis use, theft and driving offenses. He is known to police and is known mainly in respect to relatives he has that are certainly persons of interest. He is someone that is known to both Victoria Police and at a federal level, Commissioner Ashton said. There is no ongoing threat. But this is an ongoing investigation. It will be handled by the Counter Terrorism Command and Victoria Police. Prime Minister Scott Morrison also released a statement condemning the actions of the assailant. Australians will never be intimidated by these appalling attacks and we will continue to go about our lives and enjoy the freedoms that the terrorists detest, he wrote. 
I praise the bravery of the police who were on the scene and took action and those who selflessly came to the assistance of the injured and provided comfort to the distressed. Opposition leader Bill Shorten also praised the bravery of our extraordinary police officers who acted so swiftly and professionally in Melbourne's CBD. And the passers-by whose first instinct was to go to the aid of others. Victoria Police said officers responded to reports of a car fire before they were confronted by the man. Officers were confronted by a male brandishing a knife and threatening them, Superintendent David Clayton said. Counter-Terrorism Command in conjunction with the Homicide Squad will investigate the incident but police do not perceive any ongoing threats at this stage and are not looking for anyone else in relation to the attack. The exact circumstances are yet to be determined at this stage. The area has been cordoned off and the public are urged to avoid the area, they said earlier. The attacker was taken to Royal Melbourne Hospital in a critical condition after he was shot in the chest, where he later died. One of his victims had a head injury, and another an unknown injury. The men were 26 and 58 years old. Witnesses said one of those injured was a security guard who tried to intervene. A police officer sustained minor injuries but was treated at the scene. Another man, in his 60s, died of his injuries at Royal Melbourne Hospital. People were trying to help victims because he was just knifing at random. The security guard from building next door was also stabbed, but I saw he was sitting up so we know he survived, a witness told the Herald Sun. Witnesses described a chaotic scene with an injured pedestrian lying on the ground, and numerous police cars and helicopters flying overhead. Police response was swift and overwhelming. I heard at least one gunshot initially, one said. Another said they heard what sounded like a bomb and gunshot apostrophe. Roads are blocked and police advising to stay away from Brook Street. Feels like deja vu, they said, referring to the car attack on Brook Street Mall last year that killed six people. Panicked pedestrians ran in all directions away from the scene, some hiding in nearby cafes and shops, locking themselves in back rooms. The area was locked down and the public shoot away while stores including Meyer, Target, and David Jones evacuated and the bomb squad was called in to assess the car. Warnings blared from the newly installed terror warning loudspeakers for the first time, saying, This is Victoria Police, please evacuate the area. This is Victoria Police, please evacuate the area. The fire was brought under control within about five minutes. A Metropolitan Fire Brigade spokeswoman said. The fire brigade initially discovered barbecue-style gas cylinders inside the vehicle, but the bomb squad rendered them useless shortly thereafter. Police are asking people to avoid the area, saying the streets may be blocked off until as late as 8 a.m. Saturday morning. Melbourne Lord Mayor Sally Cap praised emergency services for their efforts in the city for coming together to support each other. Melbournians should be reassured by the rapid response from Victoria Police and emergency services who worked quickly, bravely and effectively to minimize harm to the public and contain the situation, she said. I'm proud of the way our community responded respectfully to police instructions at the scene. I know many of us will feel the impact of these terrible events and it's important at these times that we pull together as a community and support one another. 
It comes as a trial continues into the horrifying rampage in Burke Street in January last year. James Gargasulas is accused of deliberately crashing into pedestrians, killing six and injuring 27 others. Police will investigate whether Friday's attacker was a copycat to last year's rampage.